Here's what's happening on Juno's Connect. We'll hear about Universal Edge, Converge Supercore, and Universal WAN, all a part of the extensive portfolio of router solutions. Plus, we'll find out how to prevent security breaches from happening to your network. Hi, I'm Kara Suboy. Welcome to Junos Connect, your one-stop video source for all things Junos. Look around at the explosion of smart devices. Not only have they changed the whole dynamic of how we communicate, but they're revolutionizing education, entertainment, and working environments. How can service providers deliver this information seamlessly to all of us? Alan Sardella is here today to talk about Juniper's new network. Thank you so much for joining us, Alan. And why don't you start by telling us some of the challenges that are you know, really plaguing service providers today? Yeah, our service provider customers uh, find themselves in an interesting position on a couple of different levels. Mm -hmm. They have two separate sets of requirements that are conflicting. One is to try to increase revenue while at the same time cutting costs, never an easy thing. No. And the other is to deal with the rising tide of traffic from the devices you were mentioning, mobility, video, gaming, et cetera, while at the same time dealing with a customer base that is increasingly sophisticated and much more demanding. So how does Juniper fit into the solution? Well, we've set ourselves apart by focusing essentially on three separate areas, silicon, systems and software. And in doing this, we've allowed ourselves to create architectures that uniquely help service providers by allowing them to build more powerful and cost effective uh, solutions. Mm -hmm. Two of the key architectures that we've come out with lately are the Universal Edge and the Converge Supercore. And I'm gonna start first with the Universal Edge. That's based upon an industry-leading uh, chipset which we call TRIO. And TRIO allows you to do three things better than anything else on the market. And that's scale subscribers, scale services, and scale bandwidth. Mm -hmm. And the key applications that service providers can um, take advantage of because of this are business applications such as virtual private networks, consumer applications, video gaming, and also mobility. So that is the edge, but tell us a little bit more about the heart of the network, the core. In the core, we've seen a change in traffic types, again, referring back to the devices that you were talking about before. And the result has been a rise in IP traffic and a rise in packets and a decline in circuits. So essentially the debate is packets versus uh, circuits. And what customers have called for is a packet-oriented transport, which is different from what they have today. And that's what we're delivering with the uh, PTX series packet transport switch and the Express chipset. So we're talking about two different kinds of chipsets now, Edge, Core. What are the differences between the two? Well, with the Express chipset, it's really focused on ultra high speed scale. The platforms that it supports are 8 terabits and 16 terabits, for instance. And also the ability to scale large numbers of service tunnels and to do this in a very cost effective way. So what is the migration path for our customers to this super core? Traditional cores are TDM based and they have an optical layer and an IP routing layer on top. And a lot of cores have already been built that way. And so there's a multi-service core to deal with these uh, different types of layers. The T-series routers, which we've already had out for years, are aptly suited in order to do this. For other customers that are dealing with this great rise of packet-oriented traffic and um, can't cope with it in, in other ways, and also for content service providers, uh, the PTX series and the Converge Supercore is the way to go. Great, fantastic stuff. Thanks so much, Alan. Thank you. For more information, visit the juniper.net website. Coming up next, we'll show you how that same TRIO chipset applies to the enterprise. Looking for answers to questions about Juniper products? Join JNet and tap into the collective knowledge of a global community. Find solutions from Juniper users, experts, and Juno certified engineers. Register for your free user account and join the conversation from your mobile or your computer. Go to the link on your screen to sign up now.
Welcome back to Juno's Connect, your video source for Juno's technology and news. I'm Cara Suboy. Whether you have a large data center or a small number of branch offices, ensuring your network performance keeps up with today's traffic requirements is key. Today we have John Lahan to tell us about a universal WAN solution that meets network performance needs today while building in the scalability for tomorrow. Thanks, John. Appreciate you joining us. Hi, Cara. Thank you. And why don't you tell us about this universal WAN solution? Well, the first part is the MX mid-range. Um, Alan talked earlier about the Trio chipset and the MX series mm -hmm. and, and the performance requirements for the service provider. And we see the same explosive growth in the enterprise, video, security, mobility. And we think the MX is a good fit for the enterprise as well. So in other words, there's really no need to reinvent the wheel. Exactly. So we've introduced um, in November 2009 the MX80. And in the last month, we've introduced a released um, MX5, MX10, and the MX40. And the key message with this mid-range series is the pay-as-you-grow aspect. So if I have the MX5 now and it's completely suiting my needs, I can upgrade that over the years all the way up to the MX80 when the time is right. Exactly. So scaling your network along with your business needs. Uh -huh. Perfect. So then why are you calling this the universal WAN? Well, it's a combination of the MX mid-range series and the SRX series. The SRX will fit at branch offices and the MX could be um, uh, an aggregator. So the four areas we're focused on are the um, aggregation, data center interconnect, um, where data centers can be extended across the WAN and we can um, you know, minimize the jitter and the latency across the WAN at layer two. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other area is the WAN core. The MX series is a nice fit here with the advanced MPLS features, IP features, etc. And the final area is the Internet Edge. Um, the MX series has all the advanced features required to connect to ISPs. Well, thank you so much, John. We really appreciate your time. My pleasure. If you'd like to learn more about Universal WAN, visit the Juniper website. Coming up next, we'll look into the anatomy of security breaches, who the hackers are, and how to prevent them from getting into your network. If you're looking for information about Junos, go to Junos Central. There, we'll tell you about the latest webcasts. Plus, we'll have an archive of the ones we've already done. You're also going to find day one booklets. We have the books, information about the books, and the bios of all the authors. Just go to www.juniper.net slash junos. You can even find all the Junos Connect videos. I'm just saying. Welcome back to Juno's Connect. I'm Kara Suboy. Over the last decade, hackers have become more and more sophisticated with very specific motives. To protect your network, you need to understand how they work. Joining me today is Kareem Tuba, VP of Security Strategy. Kareem, thanks so much for joining us. And why don't you start by filling us in on the different types of hackers out there? Yeah, so what we see today are three types of hackers. The first one are hacktivists, people like Anonymous and Lull Security that are getting a lot of airtime in the broader news, and they're out there trying to use hacking as a means to forward political gains. Mm -hmm. Second one is state nations, which are foreign governments that are trying to extract sensitive information from America or other countries. Sure. And the third one is what we call hackers for hire. These are the guys that 10 years ago were all about notoriety. Today they've moved to a model of profitability, largely funded by organized crime, where they steal sensitive information like your credit card and my social security number, resell it on the black market for actual dollar value. So going back to that first category, the hacktivists, why don't you give us an example of one of their attacks and what could have been done to prevent it? So Sony's a great example. They've been attacked and in the news a lot lately. And Anonymous attacked them about two and a half to three months ago with what's called a distributed denial of service attack, where they use botnets to effectively take down their service. What's interesting about that attack is it's something we saw 10 years ago in the industry as a whole and really could have been prevented if not eliminated altogether. Mm. And what, we sh what the organization should have done is really put a technology like the SRX with the specific configuration parameters that are capable today to really rate limit and understand where the attack is emanating from and stop the request from coming in from those specific IP address ranges. And what about the hackers for hire? How about an example of one of their attacks? And again, what could have been done to prevent it? Yeah, so keeping in mind that these guys are out for information, not just taking down a service, but extracting information. One in particular that happened not too long ago with a customer that we know was really an organization that went out and attacked a site and got access to sensitive information, in this particular case, account information. And they used what's called a brute force URL attack, where they manipulated the actual URL string. And simply by having a singular account, by manipulating the URL, 
we're able to gain access to all the other accounts and glean information about the other users. And as a result, what really should have been done is use the technology like AppSecure running on the SRX that could have baselined what was normal and then, and then reported on anything that was a deviation from that normal, specifically for the URL requests. So what's the trend we're seeing here? We've got old style attacks, we've got newer attacks. How does a company really stay ahead of the game? Yeah, and so that's the challenge. So we've been advocating for a while this notion of layered approach. And one of the reasons we do that is because organizations have to understand that they have to protect against the attacks that were around 10 years ago. Yeah. They have to protect that what's around today. And they have to still keep that eye on the future. Absolutely. with regards to what other potential attacks are out there. So a comprehensive layered approach that starts at the device network all the way through to the application is the right way to approach it. Great advice. Thank you so much, Kareem. And that's it for this episode. I'm Kara Suboy. We'll see you next time right here on Junos Connect.